Hello. <laughs> My name is Alex Baluya. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I was a former poultry journalist, uh, but now I'm a community cook. Um, I am also the founder and uh, executive director of Art Relief Mobile Kitchen. I would like to begin from a quote from an Italian mystic and revered Catholic prior. Start by doing what is necessary. Then, do what's possible, and suddenly, you're doing the impossible. It's from St. Francis of Assisi, my favorite, favorite saint. <clears throat> it was New Year's Eve of a new decade. The 1980s were rolling in. And I walked into the Ermita church with fireworks exploding all around me. I knelt down with an Associated Press issue, F2 camera with a defective motor drive, and a worn out 24 millimeter lens. It was terrible equipment. And uh, most of the time that I was with AP, I had to use that equipment. But that didn't matter. I was in the high heavens just to have my, my first job as a photo journalist. And I thank God for a chance to make the world a better place. I was full of idealism, and photojournalism seemed to be the perfect platform to be of service to the country. Actually, the fireworks were sort of an omen of things to come. Soon it would be real bullets and bombs. That's the way of photojournalism. Uh, the 1970s was a decade which bolded me. Turmoil within me and all around me molded me and strengthened my resolve that a, that a life worth living was a life in solidarity with the suffering masses. The, so the Associated Press was my first job and this would be my life for two years. Until I felt restricted and wanted to produce long-term documentary work. Um, I pounded the streets every day with uh, gathering news photographs and, and that manufacturing, I learned that manufacturing chance was basically vision, persistence, and plain hard work. That the chance when it came favored the individual who worked the hardest and followed his or her vision. In photography, we have a similar term. It's called mysteries of chance. It is that moment when the light is perfect, composition, composition is there, and the decisive all fall into place to make a great photograph. I would also have the honor of working with the alternative media in the 1980s during the presidency of Ferdinand E. Marcos Sr. I worked for Ampahayagan Malaya until people power toppled the dictatorship and Cory Aquino came to power. I was inspired and challenged largely by a book by Susan Maicilas entitled Nicaragua. And I knew I had to follow this lead. I resigned, I resigned my staff position from AP, collected my pay, and dared do something that not too many photographers were doing at that time. I took a slow boat to Mindanao and co covered the growing communist rebellion. Kasama. It was a collection of photographs of the New People's Army, and it was my first National Book Award. Yun yung naging resulta ng first trip ko sa Mindanao. My second book, later with the Philippine, Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, produced Brotherhood about police brutality at the Western Police District. My third documentary work was an exhibition called Gikan's Area about the protected areas in Mindanao and how development aggression threatens our dwindling natural resources and destroys the ancestral lands of our First Nations tribal Filipinos. I could say uh, 
that I witnessed and participated at the height of photojournalism in the Philippines, from its classic roots in film and dark room work until the introduction of the digital camera. But at this stage, I felt I had done my work in the media industry and wanted to give way to younger photographers. I also had a great urge to explore other forms of humanitarian work. On September 9, 2013, armed elements of the National Liberation Front entered the Ponga city in Mindanao and held about 200 civilian hostages. What followed, what is, it, what followed was the Sambuanga siege. It was a battle that lasted for two weeks, leaving, leaving thousands and thousands of Muslim families homeless and living inside refugee camps. I was, by this time, an aging photojournalist. It was really hard to get assignments already by that time. And I was stuck with obsolete uh, digital cameras. You know how fast uh, digital cameras change, right? And they're very, very expensive. So I was getting left behind, getting left behind, trying to fuck. And uh, I said, oh, while I missed the battle, this was also a blessing in disguise. As I looked at the bigger picture, rather than focusing on the, cap the coverage of the battle, I started to imagine all the war refugees and wonder, how are these people going to be fed? And why not an organization that could come into ground zero, set up a mobile kitchen, and feed hot meals? This was a turning point for me. Although I was not able to respond to the situation in Sambuanga, I vowed to make the mobile kitchen concept work on the next chance I had. And I didn't have to wait too long. A few months later, Typhoon, Superstorm Typhoon, Yolanda, November 3, 2013, made landfall in Leyte. So Yolanda left a trail of death and destruction in its way. More than 6,300 deaths were reported. And it was just utter destruction. You had to be there to believe how, how awful it was. Even my, my wife, when she first landed in Tacloba, she got dizzy. She, she couldn't uh, function very well. Uh, the smell of decaying dead bodies, flies, dirty water, uh, Mosquitoes in the evening, it was terrible. Anyway, the airport in Tacloban City was barely operational as government struggled to fly, to fly in C-130s with relief goods into the Billiard province. As the C-130s began to fly back to Luzon, refugees who had lost everything because of the storm were rushing to the airport trying to flee in any way they could. Hunger and despair was making people desperate. Flying out of Tacloban to seek shelter with families or friends in Luzon was the only way out of this hellish situation. As I wandered in Henson on Facebook at home, uh, I decided the best way to bring the mobile kitchen or to use the mobile kitchen was to feed the people arriving first at Villamore Air Base. That's the first thing I did. I made a simple post in Facebook, and within one hour, I had everything I needed to feed the refugees that were in town. That's the post. I think within 30 minutes, the media started calling me, are you really going to go there? You're, you're a photojournalist, right? Yeah, I said, yeah. I just happen to be changing careers right now. You know? On the way to Villamore Air Base, we had to have a name, right? So I asked my, my, my precious, my wife precious, uh, 
what's going to be the name? And she said, Art Relief Mobile Kitchen, because we're artists, we're mobile, and we have a kitchen. Actually, it was our kitchen from home. I brought everything for my, for my kitchen from my home. We brought it to Villa Mar. <clears throat> and then I thought of the acronym. A-R-M, ooh, that's not bad. Arm K, that's, that clicks. And so I used, we used that. We ended up staying in Villamar Air Base for, for a total of 22 days. Open 24-7 for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Arm K had more than 30,000 meals. We had wall-to-wall -wall donations. Our funds ballooned, and more importantly, volunteers were coming in every day to help out. A food movement was born. A food movement was born. We did what, what was necessary. We did what was possible. And now, the impossible was happening. After we were our air base feeding, Christmas was just around the corner. And now I had to see if our kitchen was indeed mobile. I decided to move to Ground Zero in Akroban City to feed the Christmas dinner for victims of Superstorm Yolanda. To come back in the Air Force, Arm Pay was given clearance to ride with the C-130. <clears throat> Ten tons. Ten tons of food, equipment, and 30 volunteers. That's what we had. We landed in Tacloban, ready to cook. We stayed 11 days cooking every day, starting from breakfast. After Misa Tigalde on Christmas Day, we served pasta, fried chicken, fruit salad, it was a feast. It was like we existed inside a miracle. After the mission, we left all our equipment in Tikbao, where we established the second local, Local 65, Chapter of Arm K. There. That was our second mission. The evolution of the mobile kitchen into a more broader and sustainable concept of kitchen, community kitchens, began when we decided to mount our third feeding mission on the island of Eastern Samoa. I chose a, a small town with 8,000 inhabitants, Hernani, Eastern Samoa, look it up, which was also very, very hard hit by Yolanda. To launch a feeding mission, we hired a truck in Leyte to haul the kitchen equipment from Tikbao to, to Hernani, a mere three hours ride. You just had to cross the San Juanito Bridge, and you were in summer. We fed a Valentine's meal of eight, for 8,000 residents in Hawaii within three days. <clears throat> it's amazing. It, sometimes I think about it, and I'm amazed. Amazed by, amazed by it all. <laughs> and this, you know, I have pictures to prove that we came from there. And these pictures are posted in real time so that the donors can see where, where, where does our donations go? It's there. No? Our RMK banner flew alongside international humanitarian food aid, humanitarian aid agencies and this made me proud. We were the first, we still are the first emergency food aid agency in the Philippines. And up to now we exist. Friends and total strangers encouraged me to continue our day's work, believing in its advocacy. Hot meals during times of calamities. The Art Relief Mobile Kitchen now is 10 years old. 10 years of service, folks. We have launched more than 100 feeding missions all over the country. We have, we have served an estimated 700,000 meals. 700,000 meals. And this, this is not fast food, folks. This is slow-cooked meals. Meals that you, have, you would have at home. Meals that would comfort your stomach, comfort your, your low morale. We have added new local chapters within the country and continue to cook hot meals in times of distress. We have learned from every mission. 
The process of mounting of Fijian is enormous task. While lining out the logistical plans, you have to raise funds. We, make, we have to make phone calls to artist friends, LGUs, etc. to garner the support when you get to ground zero. But to tell the complete story of our game, we need more than 18 minutes. Each story of, of each reading mission will always be different. Walang pareho. Kumbaga. Walang pareho yung each feeding mission. Lagi siyang iba. New protocols are made. Some are broken. And you have to make new hugs. It's really, really, really very difficult also. So setting up field kitchen and feeding thousands of time is the ultimate test for any chef or cook. The logistics are staggering. But it always will be a work of progress while we're doing it with lots of love. The process of as I said, it's very enormous. The work. No? When we get, when we if choosing the venue for making choosing the venue for your kitchen is also very important. You have to have an ample supply of clean potable water, making sure that you have at least ten to fifteen local volunteers to assist in cooking. An ocular inspection is also ideal to cook the cooking area, sleeping quarters for the cold core volunteers, and to see what is available to the local market. Next, we decide which equipment to bring, the mode of transportation needed, making sure if the roads are possible or not, or the sea is calm enough for crossing. This is all done within less than a week. Sometimes it takes longer. When all these elements are, are in place, we decide on the final date to leave and pray everything goes well and we didn't forget anything. And we have to make sure of the safety of all the core volunteers. When we finally, when we finally arrive in ground zero of calamity, the equipment is then brought down. We put the field kitchen in order, testing the burners, making sure we have shopping areas for the vegetables and meats. We go to the market to see for ourselves what is available for the first menu. We buy as much as possible from the, pro from the produce locally grown in the area. And we buy meats to slaughter from home, home own owners. The meals that we cook must also be culturally accepted, acceptable to the areas we serve. We encourage local volunteers who themselves cook at home to join us. After all the preparation and the day of the first meal comes, it is with great happiness and absolute relief when you see those volunteers for first arrive. Usually they are nanas, no? we call them mga nanay You know, affected, affected uh, mothers of, of whatever, I know, the last mission we had was from the oil spill, no? First, you know about the story, right? Uh, and they become very close to us. Uh, we have, like, you know, uh, a relationship that blossoms from our cooking time together. So we have breakfast first, and then we start to prepare the meal that will feed 1,000 people. When you witness the victims of calamity, take that first slurp of that hot soup and you can see their eyes brightening. You can actually feel their knees getting stronger. All the hardships that we have gone through just turns into pure joy. I've had two chances in my life. I've had two chances. Uh, what if those chances come to you someday? I think you should Grab those chances. Hug them tightly. Because you'll never know. It may make a difference in your life. It may not change the world, but it might make it a little truthful, more truthful world. Or a much kinder world. We are the Archelief Mobile Kitchen. We can and will feed the hungry in times of distress. This is our creed. Thank you.